here, everyone had a part to play. Cinderella really wouldn't be the same without its gorgeous wardrobe. The Camila Cabello-led Cinderella retelling is all about fashion. From the aspirations of the titular princess, the stylish looks of Billy Porter's magical Fab G, and of course, all the glamorous ballroom dresses, costume designer Ellen Mirajnik definitely did not disappoint with her fabulous work for the Jukebox musical. This is gorgeous! Yes, future queen, yes! This Cinderella makes plenty of changes to the timeless story, and one of the most notable is the fact that Billy Porter plays a now genderless fairy godmother. Somebody as fashionable as Porter couldn't just have any old outfit. So costume designer Ellen Mirajnik cooked up something special for the Pose star. Porter's primary costume consists of a gilded gown, complete with reflective shades that were inspired by the wings of a butterfly. Porter stressed that it was vital that the costume represents both masculine and feminine elements. Nothing in life ever stays the same, good or bad. Perhaps the biggest challenge for costume designer Ellen Mirajnik was designing Cinderella's iconic ball gown. I realized that this was the biggest challenge of the entire show, Cinderella being the designer and I was the ghost designer. Mirajnik decided not to go with the blue hues that became so iconic in the Disney versions and also wanted to avoid any tinges of red. It was very much guided by lightness, air, and glittering light. The end result was a dress that not only felt appropriate for the tone of the film, but helped it stand on its own from the other countless adaptations of the classic tale. It's a Cinderella for the 21st century. Cinderella's silhouette design for the film was actually inspired by the glass slipper. As Camila Cabello had to practice her draping skills, it actually helped inspire the flower petal like the layers of the skirting. The whole entire gown curves continually, whether it be the folds on the skirt or in the waterfall on the back. On the back is this massive bouquet of flowers that is just beautiful. Any way you can make them more comfortable. Billy Porter had quite a bit of creative insight when it came to Fab G's accessories. Porter had insight in the inclusions of his character's glittery wand and custom Jimmy Choo boots. Porter had also helped with designing the magical character's horse-drawn carriage that looked more like a sports car than the typical pumpkin carriage from the classic tale. That's certainly one way to modernize Cinderella. The Cinderellas have always featured the main character working away in ratty clothes for her cruel stepmother and stepsisters. While her character may not have been a fan of the clothes, Camila Cabello felt differently. I loved my work costumes, they were so comfortable, but still had Ella's swag to them. The team behind this new incarnation wanted to give an update to the outfit, not by making it modern, but more relatable and workable. Cinderella's work clothes entails of a simple white cotton long sleeve slip that is layered underneath a corset topped dress that is hiked up at the ankles. The most modern part of this costume is the triple wrapped brown leather belt bag. That was the modern touch because I just thought it actually suited her and when she went to town quietly to try to make transactions. The design of Tallulah Greaves' Princess Gwen's borderline futuristic and streamlined silhouettes with sharp power shoulders, even black brocade, and metallic embroidered palette are described by Ellen Mirajnik as a bit classic, a bit serious. The costume designer aimed to completely avoid any cues associated with a particular time period. Her shoulders were strong, her fabrics were sturdy, the shapes were very clean and not floaty at all, to indicate her seriousness about where her intentions lie as the people's princess, and what she wanted to do with herself, the place, the town, the city. While the hairstylists on set of Cinderella used plenty of different hair products while filming, one in particular was used on every cast member. Frizz E's John Frieda Moisture Barrier Firm Hold Hairspray. Quite the lengthy name. Sharon Martin and her team swore up and down by the hairspray. The days are long and we need to keep everyone looking fresh. That really helped keep the hair looking soft and done without being too set. Cinderella's wicked stepsisters, Drizella and Anastasia, required a more flamboyant and showy design for their wardrobe. From flashy colors and their over-embellishments on top of a blending of a more modern influence with period silhouettes, Mirajnik designed the dresses so that they would have the two characters' wardrobes match their personalities. They too were very presentable. There is no marriage market in Cinderella, but there is the hope that a suitor would come calling, and one of the sisters would become engaged or married so they were always somewhat dressed to the nines. Unlike many of the other characters' wardrobes, Idina Menzel's Vivian's clothes actually do harken back to a particular decade, just not one you'd expect, the 80s. 
Her jewel tones, her vivid prints, and pussy blouses are all visibly representative of the era. In fact, much of Menzel's wardrobe was based off of the 80s era of legendary designer Christian Lacroix. The ball gown worn by Menzel was all hand embroidered. In order to create all the ball gowns that were to represent cultures from all around the world, the costume department brought around 200 quinceañera dresses directly from Mexico and fitted them up so they were ready even before filming was shut down due to the pandemic. We had a full team, great assistants, cutters, and stitchers. The dresses had to be taken apart and everything else was refashioned, redesigned, and refabricated to become this overly done ball. The team behind Cinderella were adamant about making the film centered around female empowerment, and that meant not putting any woman down, including Cinderella's stepsisters, who are typically described as ugly. Makeup head Sharon Martin was careful while designing the characters of Anastasia and Drizella. Anastasia was made up to have a look of innocence, like someone who is not driven by fashion and glam. Drizella, on the other hand, was all on board with the glamour of hair, makeup, fashion, and finding a husband. I think of her as a Kardashian. She was always fully made up. You couldn't tell if she had just woken up or if she's going to a ball. I'm gonna go see if he needs a wife. Nope. Both Sharon Martin and Billy Porter agree that they didn't want Porter's Fab G look to come across as drag queen, as they wanted to normalize a man in makeup as well as mainly Billy Porter's classic look. On his eyes, he wore cat eyeliner and feather-like faux lashes to complete his look and give Fab G that magical feeling. I am your fabulous godmother. Sharon Martin didn't want to adhere to stereotypes of female characters in movies similar to Cinderella, and instead wanted to truly expand upon what the women would look like in this modern reinvention of Cinderella. Martin wanted to make sure that the women in the film looked fierce and strong. I wanted bold looks for them, not just the nicely blushing, fainting look just because a beautiful man speaks to them or something like that. While the stepsisters Anastasia and Drizella were always made up and always looked primed to go to the ball, that wasn't the case for designing Idina Menzel's Vivian. Martin wanted there to be a sort of messiness to Vivian, as she was always trying to prep her daughters instead of just herself, and just hasn't gotten herself completely ready. Maybe the stepmother isn't so wicked after all. You may think me cruel. Ellen Mirajnik made a reference to the 2018 Chanel runway for Bridgerton in the dream sequence where Cinderella is running a successful dress shop. I thought, well, she'd be a little Chanel girl, you know? So I made a little top and a tulle skirt. That's very fashionable of Miss Mirajnik. From the glamorous and snazzy dresses to the preppy makeup and hair, the team behind Cinderella's wardrobe definitely excelled when it came to bringing the timeless fashion to a modern take on the classic story. What was your favorite?